Hi, I'm Ed. And I'm Tracy, and we are in Scotland, home to whiskey, bagpipes, and what I'm most excited for, the Highland cattle. While in the Army for 35 years, Eddie traveled the world, meeting so many interesting people and experiencing different cultures, but only where the military told him to go. Fortunately, during our 25 years of marriage, a few of his assignments gave us the opportunity to visit some pretty amazing places too. So come join us on this adventure of a lifetime as the La Rosas jump around the world. We're continuing our eight weeks of travel around Europe, and our fourth stop and fifth country is Scotland. Babe, what's your pet peeve at the airport? Oh, let's see. I think it goes faster if everybody moseys up right along the conveyor belt so no one else can see their stuff. <laughs> Our first stop is to our Airbnb to drop our luggage and get settled before we head out for the day. It looks very Scottish with the, the pillows and stuff. Pretty new to the neighbors, rooftops. <laughs> oh look, we have little cookies on our coffee. We met the owner downstairs and he actually is from California. Because I asked him, I said, you don't really sound like you have an accent, where are you from? So his wife is from here and he's been here for 27 years running this place. Um, we're gonna head out and explore Edinburgh. The bus stop was super convenient and only about a two minute walk around the corner from our Airbnb. We're on the bus in Scotland heading into the city center. Our first experience of public transportation in Scotland was great. Their buses are awesome. They look brand new. They're huge double-deckers with huge windows so you can see everything. And they have USB ports so you can charge your phones. We just got off the bus and we were welcomed by this guy. And we are getting ready to do a Rick Steve Hi, audio tour. walking tour. It's one of the best ways to get the lay of the land when you come to a new city. This Rick Steve's walking tour is focused on the Royal Mile which is a road that begins at the Edinburgh Castle and ends at the Holyrood Palace. Keep in mind, if you're exploring Edinburgh, that the street along the Royal Mile changes names from Castle Hill to Lawn Market to High Street and finally to Canongate. We took Rick's advice and simply focused on the walk for an overview rather than stopping and exploring along the way. We'll definitely come back tomorrow to explore a little more. At this statue, you rub his toe for good luck. I was absolutely freezing and this wall had soaked up the heat from the sun. We just finished our Rick Steves walk and um, I wanted to go up Arthur's seat because I, my friend Nicole said we had to do it and we weren't going to do it today. But look, it's right there and we ended up down here and so we figured we might as well do it. And the sun is setting so it'd probably be really pretty but it's quite the walk. It looks pretty steep. <laughs> is there an end in sight? I thought it was the end of the day but when you're married to a woman like Tracy, she says, Let's go climb a mountain. It's pretty windy up here, but we made it. Beautiful views. It took about 42 minutes. It's a little over a mile, mile and a quarter.
Of course, we had to start our day with a proper English breakfast. Since our credit card did not work on the bus that morning, I figured we should stop and get some coffee just to test out our credit card. Now that we've got our coffee, we are off to see the castle. Edinburgh Castle is one of the oldest fortified places in Europe, dating back to 1103. It has a long history as a royal residence, military garrison, prison, and a fortress. At the entrance to the castle, I noticed a lot of construction and elaborate bleachers being built, so I stopped and asked this employee what it was for. They are setting up for the Royal Edinburgh Military Tattoo, which is held in August. The first one was held in 1949. The tattoo celebrates the skills and talents of military bands from across the globe. Okay, yesterday when we noticed that there's a lot of alleyways along the Royal Miles. I'm gonna go explore them. You never know what's gonna be at the end of the alley. Let's go see what we can find. Now that Eddie's done exploring the alleyways and I'm done shopping, we're going to check out some other notable landmarks along the Royal Mile. First up is Gladstone's Land. Residents would toss their garbage and human waste out the shuttered windows. Next up is Deacon Brody's Tavern. By day, William Brody was a wealthy, well-respected citizen, but at night, he was a gambler and a thief. The life of William Brody inspired Robert Louis Stevenson to write The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. The last stop for us today before leaving the Royal Mile is St. Giles Cathedral, the same cathedral where John Knox served as a church's minister. We're now visiting Victoria Street, which supposedly inspired J.K. Rowling's Diagon Alley from Harry Potter. This little spot called Oink came highly recommended for lunch, but not if you're not a meat eater. It's called Oink. A bunch of pork, uh, barbecue, and spicy cheese in there, and it looks really good. Wow. I mostly taste the chili, the chili jam, but it's really, really good. It's a lot of meat, and the cheese is spicy. 
this is on top of the sandwich. <coughs> it's called crackling. And I'm slightly grossed out. <laughs> because you can see the hair on the pig on here. That is nasty. It's probably just like that. After they roast it, they just cut up the skin. Eat it. No. After a lot of walking, it's time for a quick pint followed up by a tasty treat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is hot cookie dough, so it's a cookie under here that they heat up but kind of leave it gooey. And then it's got the Kinder Buenos on top with like white and dark chocolate. Look at that lusciousness. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. So good. Oh my god. It's literally like it's a cookie dough in the microwave. So good. Next up are multiple views of the castle. Last up for today is Calton Hill, one of seven major hills in Edinburgh and was formed by volcanic activity about 340 million years ago. Good morning! It is day three in Scotland. Uh, we left Edinburgh and we are heading out to the Highlands. So where are we going today, babe? So today we are going to Falkirk and Stirling. So we're going to do a little exploring those two towns. Okay, we finally arrived Falkirk and I told Tracy we were going to see some horse sculptures. <laughs> and uh, I know she was pretty excited to do that, but uh, here we are. And these are the miniatures. And I think she will be impressed because the real ones are over there and we'll check it out. Okay, before we leave Falkirk, we wanted to stop by this canal. It's the only surviving canal tunnel in Scotland. It's like dripping on my head. My feet are getting wet. <laughs> my feet are getting wet. It's pitch black. It's dripping from the ceiling. <laughs> My feet are getting wet. It's kind of eerie. There's a boat coming through the canal. Made it. Okay, we survived the tunnel. Barely. It was creepy in there. Okay, Tracy and I are about ready to go take a boat ride and we're gonna go on the Falkirk wheel that you see behind me. 
and we'll explain how that works later. The Falkirk wheel is a rotating boat lift that connects two canals for the first time since the 1930s. It is the only rotating boat lift of its kind in the world and one of two working boat lifts in the United Kingdom. The wheel stands a whopping 115 feet high and raises or lowers boats by 79 feet in about four minutes. We just got off the Falkirk wheel and I don't know if it's worth it to go on it. I think when you're on it, you can't even hardly tell that it's moving. So I feel like you get a better vantage point just watching it go around and seeing how it works. Uh, oh, road closure, we gotta get off. Anyway, back to what we were saying. Um, so all in all, probably not worth it to go on it in our opinion because you can see how it works um, from the ground. You can read all about it in the visitor center, grab a snack, get a coffee, um, and then carry on with your day. Before coming to Scotland, I researched um, like the best food and drink to try here, the must-haves. And so this was on the list, so we're going to try it. It's a soft drink of some sort. Okay, it looks kind of orange, so let's see what it tastes like. I don't love it. I don't even know what to compare it to. It's not anything like what we have. I don't know. It's not terrible, but I don't, it's not the best. <laughs> Just a few more stops to see along the way before we head out into the Scottish Highlands. Oh my gosh, we were absolutely floored by the stunning beauty of the Highlands. We had just come from Ireland and we thought that was beautiful, but wow! We kept saying that over and over as we drove along. All right, good morning. It is day four in Scotland and we woke up to an amazing day already have shorts on, which I think is kind of unheard of in this area, but it's supposed to be really nice today and tomorrow. Um, we stayed in the Fort William area last night and our Airbnb had a little cat named Theo. <laughs> <laughs> so we got some kitty snuggles this morning. And since we stayed at Fort William area last night, we are taking advantage of being in this local area and seeing a, a local, local attraction called Neptune Staircase. Neptune Staircase is a staircase of locks comprising of eight different locks. It is the longest staircase in Britain, and this is how it works. running a little bit late. I had to split up to divide and conquer to get different views with the Harry Potter trains going across the viaduct. So. so I found my site in plenty enough time so I'm just going to hunker down here and wait for the train. Just 
now leaving the Glen Finnan Viaduct. It was super cool to go check it out, get some really good pictures, not necessarily with the train because it only takes 45 seconds to go across, but afterward, hang out when the people leave, get some good shots. Yeah. We have a two plus hour drive ahead of us, so we decided to um, skip the Fort William area and just get on with our drive. So we're on our way to the Isle of Skye and Eddie said he wanted to take me on a ferry. <laughs> this is not what I was expecting. As I was doing my research to find out different ways to get over to the Isle of Skye, I found three ways. One is a regular ferry, one was a bridge, and one was this ferry. This is the last manually operated turntable ferry in the world. We stopped for the night in the quaint harbor town of Portree. We popped into this church that had been renovated into a bar, hoping for some food. However, their kitchen was closed, so darn it, we were forced to just get drinks. Before heading out of town, we ventured back to the harbor to see the colorful houses and the harbor as the sun was coming up. Good morning. It is another fabulous day in Scotland. We've gotten so lucky with the weather here. Um, today we are exploring the Isle of Skye and our first stop is hiking to the Old Man of Store which I'm kind of surprised that we're hiking because he's not a hiker. <laughs> exactly what I want to do on my vacation is hike. <gasps> yeah, but you planned it. I think this is the first of two that we might do today. Yeah, so it should be a fun time, maybe. Let's do it. Making our way down. We'll, Bill, Bill Cobb, you'd be happy. You'd we'll, be proud of me. And we only have one more hike today. All right. <laughs> Maybe. When we got here at 8.30, there were hardly any cars in the parking lot. And now, all the way down the street. Get here early. We survived. We did the man of store. It wasn't too bad. I wouldn't say it's an easy hike, though. It's definitely, I would say it's challenging as far as like your cardiovascular. It's not like dangerous challenging, but it's not just a little flat stroll. Except at one point when you think you just have one little stretch, you get to the top. They tricked you. They tricked you and you have to go a whole <laughs> different way to get the If actual, you want the real good view. The real good view. Yeah, yeah you got to go all the way to the top. So um, round trip, it's like 3.2 miles. Oh, and when we got to the top, I think It'd be fun or nice to have a picnic lunch too. Take some food up there, sandwiches, and then just enjoy the view. Yeah, it's a gorgeous pretty view. Pretty awesome view up There's there. There's this nice big flat spot up there that you can hang out and chill. So, all, all right. in all, it was a good trip. Gotta do it if you're here. After hiking the Man of Store, we had worked up quite an appetite. 
We started with dessert because why not? This looks really, really good. It was really hot and these guys were taking full advantage of the shade. Just a quick little stop to check out some more castle ruins. This is what I've been waiting for. I finally got to pet a hairy coo and check it off my bucket list. Rookie move. I waited too long. Broke my own policy about filling up after it's less than half a tank. The Fairy Glen has no real legends involving fairies. It was apparently just named that to explain its unusual shape. However, it is so magical and beautiful that it's really easy to imagine fairies hiding in the foliage. It is our last full day in Scotland and we got an early start this morning because we couldn't sleep. <laughs> I've been awake since about 4.30 so we decided just to get up and go. Um, it's actually raining here today. It's our first day of rain in about two weeks between Ireland and Scotland. We've got so lucky on the weather. We're going to hit a couple of places in Portree before we head to Inverness. The legend of Shlikachan states that if you dip your face in the river water by the bridge, you will be granted eternal beauty. Time for breakfast on the hood of the car. We've got our spread from, what, two or three days ago we bought groceries, our cheap groceries, so cheers. The Aelin Donan Castle is one of the most recognized castles in Scotland. It's located on its own little island overlooking the Isle of Skye. Bishop Donan chose this spot to settle in 634 AD. The first castle was established in the 13th century and the current castle is the fourth version. Our last stop of the day is to Culloden. The Battle of Culloden was the final confrontation of the Jacobite Rising of 1745. In less than an hour, around 1,300 men were slain. Heading into Inverness to hopefully find some dinner and check into our Airbnb for the night. bathroom over here. Kitchen. Nice. nice big dining space. Beautiful backyard with chicken coop. He has three chickens. Kitchen through here. And the sitting room. This place is huge. 
Look at the beautiful windows. Oh, the chickens are still out. They haven't gone to bed yet. This is cool, like these little, this looks like old. Our room. Oh, look at We are in Inverness and we are trying to find a place to eat and apparently almost every restaurant in this town is short staffed and we couldn't find any place so we decided to have a drink and then we're going to go out again and see if we can find some, some something to eat. The oldest pub in Inverness? Yeah, oldest pub in Inverness, 1860, 18 something. Abafeldi Distillery is a single malt scotch whiskey distillery. It was founded by John Dewar & Sons in 1896 and opened in 1898. Abafeldi relies on the freshwater stream Pitaly Burn, which runs alongside the distillery and is the only distillery in Scotland to use these waters. We are in our last few hours in Scotland, and we are at Dewar's. They say Dewar's. They say Dewar's. Dewar's <laughs> Distillery in Scotland, and um, we just went through the tour, and now we are getting ready for a tasting. And this is going to be dedicated to all our whiskey drinking friends, because Tracy and I do not like whiskey. Nope. The guy but maybe kept, today is going to well, change Well, the our guy mind. kept on saying how smooth it would be, like all our Heather whiskey drinking honey friends. honey with pineapple say, notes and light toffee. <laughs> every time it tastes like gasoline to us, so we'll give it a shot. Uh, the five steps to appreciate your whiskey. So first we're supposed to notice the color. So this is the Aberfeldy, 12 years in a cask. He said to swirl it. Swirl it. Like you guys have taught us. Turn it on its side and then watch it. And who taught us that in Germany? Those are the legs. That was Greg Polk. Oh, yeah. The legs of it. This. There's okay. some legs. So this one, honey, citrus, heathered honey with sweet pineapple notes, orange peel, and vanilla. You're I have to admit, smell it, it does smell good. Okay. It does really smell good. Okay, so put it in your mouth and hold it on the roof of your mouth for 10 seconds. First. Just in time for the tongue to numb. Yeah, and then swish it around and then swallow it. <laughs> it's better than some of the other ones. Okay. It's not bad. Kind of makes my tongue tingle a little. <coughs> <laughs> Compared to others, though, that's not that bad. Okay, let me try again. <laughs> I will admit, it does go down smoother. Yeah. Next one. This was blended scotch. The notes. Honey, homemade toffee, apples, and buttery fudge. Ooh, I want the fudge. Juicy sultanas and fresh citrus with subtle vanilla. That smells really good, actually. I think it's an acquired taste. But I have to admit, either we're getting used to it, or it's way better than some of the other tastings we've had. Because we've had some that Jameson's tastes like was nasty. straight up gasoline. <laughs> I think it's pretty actually okay. It, it's maybe better. we did it the right way with we set it in our mouth for a minute so maybe, we burn the palate off. <laughs> <laughs> Here's cheers to all our whiskey drinking friends. And our last hours in Gotland. Bye Scotland, you have been beautiful. Be sure to watch the rest of our videos as we continue our eight week tour around Europe. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to follow all of our adventures.